Last time on Babs Bear Talk. And then she had to take a dig at me. The, the bigger woman. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'll beat you down, ho. What are you fighting with me over? Fight with you, He's in a fighterous mood. You could wait, this... for, you could wait for the next hour. You got all the time. Is, is fighterous a word? So don't, don't, come don't. here, sweetheart. No, arras, come no. here, sweetheart. No, arras. Arras. Come here, come here. No, don't sit yet. Come here, come here. Come say hi. I'm going to talk about you. Why not? Why am I bending down? <laughs> Can you see yourself? Huh? Say Hello, hi. Hello, people. I'm cooking here in the heat. And she's sitting there looking pretty and talking and I'm cooking in the heat. Oh, I look pretty? That's uh, all I heard out of that sentence. I give you that much. <laughs> That's all, I, that's all I heard out of that sentence. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a, a good compliment. I gotta go well, Wait, stay one yeah. second. So tell the people how the lady cussed you out yesterday. Oh, Kim cussed me. She cursed Talk me. loudly so they can hear you. And I said, Kim cursed me out yesterday. Wanted her a bottle, but she don't want to pay. I said, her pay me, give her my money. She get her bottle. Uh -huh. But nope, she went on like her. Let me, let me just sit that part. <laughs> <laughs> Am I, am I allowed to tell the story? You can tell. Tell it if I want? Okay, so he gave you the, the short version of the story, so let me give you the little bit longer version of the story, okay? So, Kim Kimball, remember I told you guys, every time I've talked about her, I give you guys a good report that she's been a nice lady. I met her, I did business with her once. She was pleasant throughout the whole thing. And really and truly, this is only the second time that I'm doing business with her in about three years, all right? So whenever I meet you and you're good and I get a first good um, a first good impression, I never speak anything negative about you because that's all I have to go on. So anyways, Kim came back to me because that company closed down, that company went bankrupt. And I think Kim went with that company and she didn't have any reason to go with them because we do a good work and we're uh, reasonably priced and we turn it around pretty fast. But usually when our customers leave us, it's because they want credit. And I can't afford to give credit because I don't have credit from anywhere. Once upon a time, when I started this business 14 years ago, we had about, I'd say a good $45,000 left as a nest egg. That's gone. That's gone. And every time we put back like a good, you know, nest egg, we pretty much have to eat it out when we don't get any work or the, work's, the work doesn't come in quickly enough. So anyways, Kim came on board. You guys remember I asked her if she would come be on the show with me and all that stuff. That's why I didn't text her to her cell phone to invite her to come be with me on the um, on the show because I didn't want to mix like Bear Pantry show business with Mac Green business. And um, also, I don't want to take liberties with people's cell phone. Like I have Sherry Shepard's cell phone and I don't text Sherry Shepard. I, I go to, um, to her directly through Twitter, like a direct message. And there are only few things that I will text Sherry Shepard on, like when it was her birthday in April and then when my mom passed because she had been keeping up to date with me on it. So she'll send me texts from time to time, but I don't text, you know what I mean? Anyways, Kim came on board. She brought her bottles in there like eight weeks prior to mommy getting really sick. And then she kind of fiddled around with her artwork until she got it right. She really didn't know what she wanted. Got it in there right when mommy took a turn for the worst. And then you guys know mommy passed. And so the day that I buried mommy was the day she wanted me to really start printing her bottles. Well, she understood, you know, why I couldn't print that day. And she was very um, decent. She gave me condolences and stuff. It, it felt heartfelt. And then the Wednesday after mommy passed, I started doing her job. And she knew that I was doing it because I updated her. And then she wanted to know, could she pick up that Friday? So I told her, no, you can't pick up all three items that Friday because we just started Wednesday and they're brand new items. We still had to tweak things on the machine. And so I told her she could pick up one product on Friday. She got kind of, what's the word I want to say? It wasn't nasty, but kind of stern. Yeah, that's the word I want to say. She got kind of stern with me and she was just like, I wanted to pick up all on Friday because the lab already mixed the product and you know I'm behind now because when you go to these labs they don't really want to mix your product and have it sitting there because sometimes the product settles and then sometimes you're just kind of like in their way they have to move on to the next person and I said Kim I'm so sorry but you know what I've been enduring for the past two weeks and she says okay okay I understand and then I told her by the way you won't be able to leave the leftover um, bearware bearware means the bottles are blank they're not printed yet you can't leave that stuff in here like you did the last time I worked for you because I really don't have the space because it's summer now. I'm taking on a lot of new companies and they're bringing a lot of stuff and I had to really turn away a customer. He could only bring half his dose because, you know, Kim's stuff was in there and other stuff is in there. 
And so she was kind of annoyed at that. She wasn't rude, but annoyed. And she says, but I'm gonna run the rest of my stuff right away. And I said, well, what is right away? Do you have your artwork ready? Because if you don't have your artwork ready, you can't leave it in here. Cause she did that before. The last time I worked for, for her, she, for, yeah, for, it was 10 months. So pretty close to a year that she left her stuff in there. And I had to find space on my mezzanine. Oh, I couldn't God. charge her any rent. You know, because it was unheard of, she's the great Kim Kimball, so don't charge me any rent. So, anywho, um, she calmed down, you know, she wasn't, I, 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 I'm I, going to tell you guys the truth from start to finish. She was not nasty, but she was more stern and more kind of annoyed. So then, fast forward to the weekend, she had someone contact me on Friday, an assistant. The assistant was a darling, she was a sweetheart. And she worked with us back and forth. She said, don't worry, we're gonna take everything out of there. We're gonna bring it back when we're ready for you to print them so you don't have to worry about stuff um, left, being left in your building. So then I told her that I would contact her either Saturday or Sunday when I was done printing for Kim because um, I didn't want the assistant to be worried that the stuff would not be ready for Tuesday because they ordered a Tuesday pickup because they need 48 hours to order the truck. So they ordered the truck on Friday. So if I promise that I'm gonna have it ready on Tuesday, I better have it ready on Tuesday. And normally we'll let people know that it'll be ready this day, but it'll be, it'll be ready in the evening that day. So we have all day to play with it, right? If we have to. And so we told the assistant that she was cool with that. So then she ordered the truck and I contacted her Saturday evening to let her know we were done. And I said, this is the invoice number. This is the amount that you owe. And I sent her a text and an email and I said, uh, don't make um, non-payment um, delay. How did I say? Don't make non-payment delay your pickup. So let Joe pour his water first. I had to let Joe pour his water because you're going to hear all of that. So I, I said it politely, you know, don't let an, like non-payment delay your pickup. And that's just a nice way of letting you know that I'm not going to give you the products if you don't pay. But I don't want to say it rude, right? So the girl never answered me all weekend. I texted her like around quarter to six on Saturday. Right after that, I came home and that's when all that shenanigans happened with the girl that was robbing my mailbox and stuff. And so then Monday, Joe blew up her phone and her name is Vivian. Joe blew up her phone. She didn't respond till like mid afternoon. And then she's like, oh my God, what's going on? And Joe says, I just want to make sure that you have an opportunity to put the money in my bank because um, you, you know, pretty much you're not going to be able to pick up if you don't. You know, Joe said it a little bit more nice, but pretty much he said that. And she's like, no, 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 we're working on that. Don't worry. Now these uh, companies like mid-sized companies like Kim Kimball's company, they always want to tell you that they have an accountant that handles all their money and, and when they sign out checks and these accountants have to approve everything or else you don't get paid. Why is it all the time that these accountants are never there on the day I need to get paid? I think it's a bunch of bull crap that people tell you and I don't play games like that. If I can't pay one of my vendors, I call and I beg, you know, like, please, we're at net 30. Can you give me a couple more days? And they're usually so good with me because I'm honest. They like that I'm honest. Even when I couldn't pay the rent at the shop in the recession, when the old owners were there, I was the only one that went over there monthly and told them, I'll give you this much this month. And then the other people just hid and they're like, we love you guys because you come tell us and you keep your word. So anyways, back to the story. So the girl is like, yeah, we're working on it. So I told her, I said, take the cash out of your account and go take it down to Chase. This is my account number and just deposit it as cash. That's the easiest way to do it. I don't have a credit card machine because I won't have that ever again because that was a ripoff. I don't want to swipe it through that PayPal thing because I'm going to lose 3%. The invoice was small enough. It was only $1,900. I can tell you guys what it was, $1,921. So um, let Joe pour his water again, guys. This is my only spot to vlog from, and I know this water will bug you. Okay, I'm back. Joe finished pouring his water. So anyways, um, the evening came and no money went into my account. So like around seven o'clock, the girl called me, but she missed me. And so she texted and she said, um, our accountant, and she named the accountant, is gonna put the money in the account tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, but the thing is, we also have the truck scheduled for eight o'clock. Will this be a problem? Well, I'm not dumb. I knew what she was asking and I really felt funny in my stomach about it because why would you plan it that way? The truck was coming in the evening at first. Why would you bump the truck up if you didn't have something evil planned, you know? So then um, I, I told her that I would you know, take the message to Joe and I did and Joe called her. 
and Joe was like kind of facetious with her. Joe was just like, well, you know, if they put the money in at eight, the truck's coming at eight, then it should be coinciding, you know, where I'm getting my money when you get your stuff. But uh, I'm not really feeling this. But Joe was not firm with her. Joe didn't say, no, you can't get your stuff. Joe was just like, the same game she was playing was the same game Joe was playing. And so then here comes the next morning. We got in there at 8.30 instead of 8 because we took the CD down to the cops. You know, we had to burn the footage for whatever happened the day before. When we got there, the truck driver was waiting and he remembered, he goes, I haven't been here in a while. Kim hasn't bought from me since July, 2013. That's the first and the last time I ever, I've ever seen or heard from Kim. And so I said, let me check my bank account. And I went on my phone, thank God the kids teach me all the apps. And I looked and lo and behold, Kim did not pay me. And so I told the guy, I said, I'm so sorry, but I have a really bad feeling in my gut about this and I can't release the product until they put the money in my account. The truck driver was like, no problem. We totally understand. Let me call my boss. He called his boss. The boss called Kim and then Vivian called my phone and Joe answered and she says, can I get the account number again? You know, so we could get that money put in so we could get our products. And Joe's like, here's the account number. And we got off the phone and shortly thereafter, Kim started blowing up my phone. And I'll put like a screen here or here. I don't know where it's gonna pop up where I'm gonna show you the messages. I think the ones in yellow is Kim and the one in the ones in blue is, is my res response to her. You're gonna see what's being said anyway, so you're gonna know. And I'm putting it out here publicly because I'm not gonna put her name in my title, I'm not gonna put her name in my hashtags because this is for you guys that follow my vlog. If it's shared, oh well, if it's not shared, whatever. I'm not trying to get my come up off of her what happened. I always share with you guys what I go through at my business. And if I can tell the good about somebody, I can also tell the bad. So anyways, um, she started to, to really curse Joe out. When I say curse him out, it wasn't bad words. There was no profanity, right? No bad words, but she was just, people will say diva, and some people might say bitch, but that's between what, what she was going on. And she was just like really raking, him, raking Joe over the coals because Joe did not want to release her product and pretty much, well, how dare you? not release my products to me. And of course she didn't say those words, but it was always implied in there. And just really screaming at the top of her lungs at Joe, kind of like the way you would see her scream on her TV show. And I know that TV show is an act, so I really didn't think she had that type of personality in her. And she went off at Joe, and when Joe gets angry, he tends to go into a higher pitch voice like uh, Tom Selleck on Magnum PI. And I don't like that voice because then he raises his voice and goes, wait, 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 calm down, get that. I'm like, no. I'm like, say it with your chest. Say it with your chest, Joe. I think that's what I'm going to name this vlog. Say it with your chest. And so I, I kept beating my chest like this for Joe to know to take his voice down an octave because he's angry now. So he's raised his voice on an, an octave and Kim's just going at him. I can hear it. I was starting to videotape with my phone because I didn't have the camera there. And then I realized that I could, you know, possibly get in trouble if I put that out there because you can't record somebody's voice or whatever, you know, in California and put it out there without their without their knowledge. They have to know you're recording them. But when it comes to text and stuff that, and Facebook posts and Twitter posts, that's a different breed of dog. And I know that once they're a public figure and you've got the proof, like in writing, like I have in the text and stuff, you can put it out there because it's not going to be slander or libel because I have proof and they're a public figure. So I even warned her about that. So she goes off on Joe and she really is hitting him hard that she can't believe you're doing this to me. I thought you were a different person than this. I can't believe that you like this. I, I, you know, your company will never work for me again in this business. I'm gonna remove everything out of your, your, your um, warehouse. What else, did I miss anything? Huh? That's the gist of what she was saying, right? But she was, eh, she wouldn't let him get a word in edgewise. And like I said, I kept saying, Joe, keep your voice low because if somebody's cussing you out and you keep your voice low and slow, they get scared because they don't know where you're coming from. Even as a school teacher, that's what you got to do to keep kids on the control. You can't be up there with the higher octave. You got to be down here and just be real quiet about what you're saying and then people are going to listen. So she told the girl, Vivian, to slam the phone down in Joe's face because remember Vivian called from her phone or we would have never answered the phone. So when Vivian called, because when Kim was calling, I didn't answer. When Vivian called, I had Joe answer, right? And so anyways, when she slammed the phone down, she started texting me and these are the texts you're going to see. And she said something to the fact that I, um, I'm disappointed in your company or something. And I, you see what I write her back. I'm like, pretty much Kim, this is business. 
it doesn't even have to be this hard just pay me what you owe and you can get your products we're not holding your product products hostage and I said I sent you an email on Wednesday telling you that I that I needed a 50% um, down payment or deposit you never responded even though you gave me the email to send it to and then here we are we finished the product for you in good faith and then now you don't want to pay for it I mean I, I am I wrong guys or should Kim have called me apologizing she should have said John Barber I'm so sorry I didn't get that money to you in time thank you for finishing my products this quickly and here let me get you paid and let's move on don't you think that's how that should have should have went or should have gone I don't even know the right verb I'm using right now so anyways um, you see all the text that's going back and forth you know where I'm pretty much telling her I warned her I said Kim be very careful what you say to me in haste or in anger because you are a public figure and you see her answer back I don't care if I'm a public figure whatever 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 that means she just really care she does not care about her audience I care about my audience and you'll never see me fly off the handle like that in public and go off like that because I know that people are watching and my viewers and my subscribers make or break me so you're never gonna see me like that okay so even when I told that old man off I was just telling him that you're a racist you know and you've come here with snide racist comments before and I'm gonna call you for what it is and he came back today to pick up his stuff and he still tried to tell Joe because of her you're gonna lose good customers oh well no he had to be stopped he did it several times he had to be called on it and I don't want him as a customer if he doesn't want to be at my place that's how I look at it so anyways um it just the text I knew that the text would get ugly so I kept it very very calm and very very business like every step of the way and pretty much by two o'clock they went and put my money in <sighs> you know what these hoes did they did not do take out cash from their account and go put it in my account that's too demeaning for them they did a wire transfer it probably cost them $35 and it nuked my account for $15 but God is always with me and I called today and I got a really sweet guy in Texas and I told him what a horrible ordeal I had with this big star on TV and that she did it this way where she nuked my account for $15 and he's like we'll remove that forthwith you don't have to endure this and um, you know basically you didn't know that this was gonna happen in the future tell your customers don't do any wire transfer because you will get charges fifteen dollars because the recipient also gets charged for domestic wire transfer and he was such a darling I think I have a new friend in Texas and um, yeah pretty much they can pick up their stuff tomorrow they could have picked it up today but I think Vivian was so afraid to call back Joel I'm done Kim was the one that went off crazy I'm done and pretty much she's the kind of person that will come back and apologize I'm sure I know that type of personality that the narcissistic type I have a narcissist in my family so I know what they're like okay they will say everything's about them when it doesn't go their way they'll cuss you out and say me 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 how did you do this to me and cuss you out and then when it's all done and they've calmed down they'll come back and they'll say I'm sorry I did that blah 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 please forgive me so I'm sure she'll come back and say that and if she does I'll come back and let you know too because I vlog my life so I feel like I can vlog this but um, I am pretty much done with her I don't have to have hatred for people in my life but at this stage of my life I'm gonna be 50 I'm motherless you know that really hurts my heart to be motherless I can't even go to my mom and bend her ear with this this she would be the person that I could go bend her ear and just tell her what happened to me and she would stand up for me you know just there on the phone she wouldn't cuss nobody out but stand up for me and um, I'm at the stage in my life right now where it's not fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me it's screw me once you're dead to me and that's I'll, I'll sit shiva for you that's what the Jews do I'll sit shiva for you if you mess me up so anyways um yeah it was a bad day yesterday Joe was upset all day all day he was upset and he goes I hate people like her really and truly because I've met so many people like her in my life and they are so entitled why do celebrities feel like they should be so entitled though I mean the minute they get a little bit of celebrity status they don't want to pay for things you know who does that too? the preachers people in church and the preachers they don't want to pay you for nothing they feel like God's gonna pay their bills for them you know I don't like to work for people from church I don't like to work for people from the Middle East especially from Pakistan and only because I've had bad experiences with the people that I've met from there you know and I just I just can't stand working for people 
that don't want to pay their bills. I mean, what gives her the right to think that she could get net 30 off of me? Because that's probably what she wanted to do. When they picked up the stuff, guys, they were going to run with that. And I would have never seen my money for a good two to three weeks. That's what she did the last time. And I don't have time to chase down no invoice. You know, my mom just died and we all had to contribute and, you know, get her buried and all that stuff. And our savings is, our savings is all gone. And pretty much we're surviving, but for the grace of God, you know, so... Um, I don't know, I might just wrap this vlog up and just let it be this because I'm so annoyed with this and then start a new one later. Um, I wanted to show you guys though that uh, the newspaper in Belize, The Guardian, wrote a report on my mom on June the 9th. I wasn't aware of it, but it was such a beautiful report. The body of the report they did before, they did an interview with my mom in 2013 when she had beat cancer for the first time and Bear Pantry Show and my mom got together and did a fundraiser for the kids in Belize. Sugar, you asked if I could find the footage, if I could show you guys that and I, I'm going to go search right now on the hard drive and once I find it I'm going to insert it in here somewhere or maybe at the end, you know, where she was so happy to give the kids those toys and they interviewed her and they wrote that report and then they just used that report, they kind of tweaked it around and then they wrote that beautiful opening and that beautiful ending. And I read it last night. I hadn't cried for two days. I cried and soaked my pillow. You know, and, and let me tell you why I cried. Because the opening, my mom got the respect that she deserved. Over here in America, the council general is good friends with my parents. And my mom did a lot for the political party that they are affiliated with that the council general belongs to. And that man did not put out a death announcement about my mom. He did not send condolences. His brother spoke at my mom's services. His brother was the last one to speak to my mom when she was still coherent and not sleeping and sleeping. He spoke at my mom's service. The brother did. And this man can't even do anything till after the fact he says, Oh, by the way, uh, my email wasn't working, so I got your email blast kind of late because my dad blasted everybody through his email. So that man that heads that newspaper in Belize, He's good friends with my mom. My mom has paid him so many money throughout the years to run ads for me in there, to run ads for my dad's business, uh, to interview people, to this, to that. My mom has pretty much kept that um, newspaper afloat, okay? And he wrote, he says, the staff at the newspaper, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna try to find, I'm gonna link it in the description, but I'm gonna try to screenshot it for you guys to freeze the frame and read it. The staff at the newspaper, the radio station that goes with the political party and the newspaper, and the United Democratic Party Secretariat, I don't even know what that word is, gives condolences on behalf of the lovely Rosalie Magnum. I'm like, oh God, I started crying. I knew the rest of the story. My sister did not even know about that interview in 2013, so when she read it, she was mad. She says, how come they wrote all this private stuff about mommy and daddy out there and they didn't get my permission? I'm like, that was already out there, Trace. That interview was already out there. She's like, she has four kids. Why is it that only your name popped up in it? I said, because mom was crazy like a fox. When she had that interview done, we did a collaboration together and she wanted me to get some credit. This had nothing to do with her death right now or the kids or whatever. I said, she didn't love me more. Okay, she did not love me more. The one she loved was Rory and he deserves it. He was such a good son to my mom. You guys don't even know. Rory took the wet sponge and went inside her mouth in her last days when she couldn't eat or drink. Put the thing on the lip balm, helped the nurses turn her, shaved her mustache, you know. Rory did everything for my mom. He deserves everything from my mom, okay? Not to say the rest of us didn't do anything, but I think he did more. And when I went there was the only time Rory trusted to leave my mom to go home and sleep three hours by himself because he trusted me with her, you know? So <sighs> I had to calm her down. I read the ending of the report. And when it said the part about the hundreds of kids that she touched, it's not just kids, it's old people. everything don't worry about a thing I'm not crying sad tears guys it's just that I can't forget what I gave her my mom was it's old people it's kids it's the disabled my mom gave to this charity that um 
they didn't try to stop women from having abortions because abortions are illegal are, are are illegal in Belize so it's not that they're trying to stop you from doing an abortion because it's all back alley abortions but this um, this place gave you options where it's like you don't have to like abort your baby because we're gonna help you with your baby and they really do it's not like here in America where they say they're gonna stop you from having an abortion but they don't care nothing about the baby after it's born this place helps with the baby even up to like kindergarten and just try to help you and get you on your feet my mom donated a lot of her money to that place because she wanted people to have options you know she didn't want to block people's options but she wanted them to have options my mom loved her gays my ever since we were little gay people have always been in her in our lives and we didn't view them as anything or anyone different my mom loved her gays her transvestites you know ever since we were kids in belize and even against my dad's you know objections my mom would have people in her home in her home that she did, that my dad didn't care for <laughs> My mom was so liberal and open-minded. She believed in equality for all and she really received and accepted everyone for what they were. When she first met Jada's friend Louis, because Louis is openly gay, and she met him, she goes, oh, poor little boy. You know, he can't help himself. You know, he was born like that. You could see it in him though. He was born. <laughs> and I don't really, really even know what my mom, what her vision or her views were on if you were born that way or if you choose to be that way. She never talked that kind of stuff with us. We were just taught acceptance. Accept everybody for what they come to you with. Love them with the love of God and God will work it out. That was my mom's motto, you know? So she wasn't a saint. You know, don't think she was a saint. She cussed her bad words. You, you saw that vlog when she was cussing about Bruce and, and Caitlin. And she watched her Jerry Springer and her Maury Povich. Maury Povich was her boyfriend, though. And her Bill Cunningham and her Little Women LA, Little Women New York, Little Women Atlanta. And what's the one called where the girl did the, 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 the porno movie in the shower? Something Housewives or Wives of Atlanta. I don't know what it was. She watched all those shows. I don't watch none of that. So Mommy wasn't the same, but Mommy was real. Mommy was real, so... I'm going to see you guys on the next vlog, okay? I'm just going to keep this one like this. And I love you guys. Diana, thank you so much for the card. Thank you for the seed that you sowed with me. I hope you ask God for a harvest from the seed. We don't believe in karma, but I believe in sowing and reaping. And what you've sowed with me, God can give you a harvest. We don't give with the expectation that we're going to get back from that same person. But my belief system is that we give with the expectation that God's going to bring it back to me. Some way, somehow, he's going to circle it back to me through you or someone else and um, we believe that he causes men to give on to our bosom just like the scripture says and um, yeah when you give somebody something you just go to God and go I gave this gift with a clean heart and Lord can you do this for me you can't buy God but it's just that you kind of direct him with what you want the people who say I gave and I don't expect anything back in return my thought process is how dumb thou art it's because God says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God is showing you several ways he's going to give back to you. Shall men give unto your bosom. So the Bible, guys, is a book about receiving. It's not a book so much about giving. The preachers would want you to believe, give, 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 until you, you know, you're living in a cardboard box somewhere. But God also wants you to learn how to receive. And every day I wake up, I say, I am a receiver. I am a receiver because I'm going to receive his glory, his grace, his mercy. I'm going to receive from anybody who wants to give to me a compliment, you know, um, some cash to pay my bill. Um, what else? A hug, a smile, a kiss, whatever somebody wants to give me, I need to be receptive of it because if I don't receive it well, I'm not going to get again. That's just how it works. Ungratefulness leads to less and gratefulness leads to more. <laughs> Rosalie, 
You don't get a fierce spirit already? Alright, yes, yeah, Mr. Put your hands together for Mr. Rosalie and Mr. Dan Field. Put your hands together. They are, they are responsible for this, uh, Vashia, and um, their daughter lives in LA. She couldn't be here, but she sent her a lot of good news, alright? If you realize if you're getting a lead ticket, and that is a whole lot of that ticket, the kind of ticket, will it tag you to a Chris Pantry show? If you want to check it out, you go to youtube.com. This is a record, right? Bear Pantry. Oh, excellent. Come to the mic. Alright. Very important part of any festivity. Any festivity is to involve who? Is to involve who? God, alright? And once he is here, everything's gonna be fine. What's your name? And Miss Thompson, she's gonna do the honors here and heal God for us. Yeah, heal God as a God. Look up for the people of the Okay. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we all pray? Father, we just give you praise and thanks, Father God, for this day, Lord, that you have given us, God. Father, we ask for your guidance, for your help, and for your blessing upon everyone on our all for Miss Makaba and her family, God. Bless you, Father. And for all that have helped us to put this party together, God, bless them, Father God. We thank God and we just honor you and praise you because there is no other God like you. And without you, God, we are nothing. Thank you again for your presence here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And that's because lots of our uh, friends and family have been praying hard. So please don't forget to stop praying for Rosalie, say, because even though she has been free for a year and a half, that means you can't come back. But God will take care of that if we pray for her. Alright? So make some nice, Mr. Rosalie. Make some nice. Show some love. Alright. I have pain in my side and I found out that you know, the doctor said they had to take off the food on the back. Yeah, two times in two days time, two, two, three, about the three liter of fluid. And then he said the cancer, they had cancer, he said, but it's not in the lungs, but it has moved your lungs all the way. And they did test immediately, they gave me a lung operation and six months of chemotherapy.